What up, y'all? Mr. Mar Sharp, short man, film works in the building. All right, so right now I'm about to give y'all my Rocky Five video, and as y'all are about to see with this video, that it's a little bit older. It's about two years old, and I was actually digging through all of my video files, and I actually found this video because I forgot that I had did this video when I was back at my other spot, and. It just totally slipped my mind that I had this video, which made me want to go back to doing my videos on the Rocky movies. So, as promised, here's Rocky Five. It's a little bit older. I was still in my infancy stages of doing these videos. So, y'all gonna might y'all might see some differences in this video than than y'all see with me now. So, um, as promised, here we go, Rocky Five. Y'all enjoy. Best fight of my life. I just did that, you know. And and all I need is a couple more. No, Rocky, you suffered severe brain trauma. Well, he could be wrong. Anybody could be wrong. I don't think he is. Well, he ain't God. Look, Agent, only God ain't wrong. Hey, Rocky, this is what's good for you. Who well, needs a couple of easy ones, right? No, the way it is. You can't get licensed in any state. He can't get licensed anyway, Doctor. That is correct. Rocky, do you love me? I love you. Why do you ask that? Because... If you love somebody, you live with them, you live for them, you don't gamble with a life. What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Mar Sharp, Short Man Filmworks in the building. <laughs> and if you listen to Tank, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. So, we are on the second video of my Rocky, uh, my Rocky Splurge. And as I was telling y'all in the last video from the last one, I did Rocky IV first and based on how I was introduced to these Rocky movies, I'm, I was introduced to these movies way out of order because I started watching Rocky in 85, which was with Rocky IV. That was my first Rocky movie. This is my second Rocky movie that I actually seen. And this, uh, we're going to be doing Rocky V. I, let me get back into it. We're doing Rocky V today, which was uh, released in uh, 1990. And uh, I didn't see this movie in the theaters. I saw this movie when it came on cable uh, I want to say it came on cable like maybe like a year later. And it actually ended up turning out to be one of my favorite Rocky films out of, out of, out of the entire franchise. And I know a lot of people give Rocky V a little, some, some, some flack. Not as much as I thought they would give Rocky IV. You know what I mean? Because I, 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 some people I talk to, they can't stand Rocky IV because, of, because it's not so in-depth. And it, hasn't, it doesn't have as much uh, story to it. But... Um, I also hear that about this one too. Like a lot of people really didn't Rocky didn't did Rocky really didn't like Rocky Five as much as they did um, one, two, and, and and three. Me personally, I liked Rocky, and I, I like Rocky Five. And I think for me, I like this movie so much because of the nostalgic feel I have for this movie because I saw it when I was eleven, and coming off of Rocky Four, going into this movie. Uh, you know, I just got, I, I, I don't know, I, I, just think, I just think for me, it just, I just got so many different memories with this, with this particular, with this particular film, you know what I'm saying, of, of being young and, and, and being the age that I actually seen this movie. Now, don't get me wrong, I had seen Rocky 1, 2, and 3 during this time span, but never to the point where, uh, where I actually um, really, really looked at it in a way where it was like, okay... I looked at it, studied the movies, really put myself into the movies as I did with Rocky IV. You know what I mean? The other Rockies, they pretty much came on TV. And with them coming on TV, I didn't really sit down and watch them like I really did. The only real memory of really of a Rocky movie that I actually really did watch between Rocky IV and Rocky V was Rocky III. And, I, and pretty much I remember that movie because of the performance by Mr. T. You know what I mean? But with uh, Rocky V being introduced to this movie... You know, it, 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 I don't know, it just, it, it's, it's a certain way, it just, it, it tugs on your heart, it tugs on your heartstrings. And I think anybody who looks at any Rocky movie, Rocky movies are man movies, you know what I mean? And what made, what really made me really think about a lot of these movies was uh, listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast, where they had their own little series of what they went through and what they did with the with the with the Rocky movie, with what they how they was talking about with the Rocky movies, and it just brought up so many different memories along with these are uh, with these Rocky movies. So anyway, because I feel like I'm just rambling and going and bumping on at the gums. Let me get on. Let me get on to the movie. So in Rocky Five, we pick up where 
Rocky IV left off with him finishing the fight with uh, Ivan Drago. And we pick up with, with that left off. And I kind of always kind of had an issue with the, with the, with the, with the uh, continuity of the time, but we'll get to that later. But we pick up with Rocky IV left off, with Rocky IV left off after the fight. And we realized that we found out that Rocky has sustained so much head damage from him taking on so many different matches. And we all know, we all seen Rocky, and we all seen how Rocky fights. He blocks punches with his fucking head. So we already know how that goes. You know what I mean? So in the movie, you see that all of those head punches actually takes his toll. And, you know, doctors are telling him that, you know, if you take one more fatal blow, you know, this is, is it, you know, you, you pretty much going to end up an invalid. You know, brain damage, and you'll give you a whole bunch of other... You know medical issues that's go, that's going that can go along with the uh, with the with the facts of being brain damaged. You know what I mean? So we see in the movie that Rocky does retire. He retires, and we find out that his accountant pretty much mis mis mismanaged his money. Also, too, with a deal with Paulie, because Paulie got his own little things going on in the film. You know what I mean? Paulie always I don't want to say Paulie has always been that shady character. He's always had his. He's always had his own gripes and his own issues going on in the movie. But in this particular in this particular uh, uh, situation, he mismanages the money. He gives power attorney to the accountant, and the accountant just pretty much just runs through all the money and just 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 does Rocky dirty, you know. So they have so pretty much they they got to move back to the old neighborhood. Everything has been seized. His house been how Rocky's house has been seized, and his cars and, and and motorcycles and all his property has been seized. And they got to go back to the old they got to go back to the old neighborhood, you know. And he's at that point where, but sorry about that, guys. I had a little issues with my camera, so I had to kind of stop recording for a second and then uh, get back on the grind. So, basically, what I was talking about, Rocky has to go back to the old neighborhood where he uh, pretty much where he started out. You know what I mean? He's got to get himself going back, get get himself back, get himself back together, and get back into the, I guess, the everyday grind of what he was doing before. You know, before he was boxing, you know, and by him retiring and his money's being lost, you know, he's got to move back to the old neighborhood, which is, it's, 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 it's a little bit of a downer. You know, I ain't gonna say it's a little bit of a downer, it's a lot of a downer, you know, because now Adrian has to go back and uh, his son Robert has to go back too. But he, Robert didn't grow up in that neighborhood. So without him, without him growing up in that hoodish type of rhyme and he's, uh, he's new to it all, you know what I mean? He's. Excuse me. He has his struggles of dealing with the new type of lifestyle, you know. And Rocky has his struggles too of going through it and 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 being where he once was. And now he has to go back to this. Uh, he has to go back to how he started, you know what I mean? And we get down to it where you know he kind of has a little bit more life rejuvenated to him when he meets Tommy Gunn, and he meets Tommy Gunn, and Tommy Gunn is this young. Up and comer, uh, up and coming boxer, and he had, he comes to Rocky uh, to be a, a, a tutor of sorts in the beginning of when they, of their first meeting. He's kind of like, okay, you know, I want you to you know to train me, I want you to check me out, and I want you to see what I got. And Rocky is a little bit hesitant to take him on because he's like, you know, I'm not no, I'm not a manager, you know, I'm a fighter, you know, and I'm not really, it's not it's not my lane, you know what I mean? So. He makes the after a while after seeing Tommy fight, he makes the decision to actually take him on, and actually uh, takes on the, the 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 role of being his trainer and being his manager. And as you see, Rocky develops this relationship with Tommy Gunn, all at the same time while neglecting his son, which he should be passing on the knowledge of boxing to his son. You know what I'm saying? But with that going on, you see like with Rocky. It's kind of like his way of being in the ring without him being in the ring, you know, along along with Tommy Gunn. And then, you know, Tommy keeps going, he's fighting, he's fighting, and he gets to the status of where he's kind of, he's kind of asking for this, <clears throat> he's asking for this title shot. And as he's asking for this title shot, you know, Rocky's still trying to groom him, kind of trying to groom him the way, Rick, the way Mickey did him. Mickey kind of took him under his wing and worked him slow, he worked him slowly and let him build up to the type, to the, to the, to the title shot the way he wanted to have him build up to the title shot, you know. And then all the while you have this promoter by the way by the name of Duke, played by uh Richie Gant. But like I said, I'm gonna get to all that later. You got Duke who's kinda Don he got like a Don King pers persona along with him and you know he's 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 fast talking, he's quick talking and at first he tries to get Rocky to jump back in the ring. 
And when he sees that that doesn't work, he fig he figures, okay, well, you know, I could come after Tommy Gunn and kind of hook Balboa on what I want on what I want him to do. You know what I mean? So pretty much Duke Duke is is about the money. He's about the money. He's greedy. He wants to go after, you know, whatever he wants to go after. You know, he pretty much doesn't care about none of the boxes. He's he's in it for the paycheck, which 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 is his 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 bottom line. You know, so. Uh, with that, with that, with that going on, you know, Rocky is losing his his relationship. He's losing his relationship to his son. He's kind of he's getting out of touch because he's putting more of his of his of his of his attention, time and attention into 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 Tommy Gunn until he realizes, you know, I don't want to say Tommy Gunn is 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 a snake in this movie, but you know, once Duke gets in his ear, it kind of makes him be like, okay, well. I don't want to go. I don't want to. I don't want to go the same. I don't want to not to say the same route, but I don't want to be under Rocky's shadow anymore. Because a lot of times in the movie, Tommy Gunn is referred to as Rocky's robot or Rocky's shadow. You know what I mean? And he it starts to get to the point where he's like, you know, everybody's calling me your shadow. Everybody's calling me your robot. This is not, you know, how I envision myself. You know, coming up. You know what I mean? And then to Duke, he 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 exit on too. You know, so but. Eventually he is a, he he exit on and then you know we get to the point where these two eventually fight and it, and as it goes down you know it's pretty much a street fight they're not in the ring it's a street fight and you know we all know how Rocky movies end you know Rocky ends up beating his ass and as he after he ends up beating him as he after he ends up beating him down you know then you you know you you cheer for you cheer for Rocky at the end at the end of the movie you know what I mean so it's kind of like a quick gist of the movie really didn't get heavy into the movie. Um... Like I said, man, I liked Rock, I liked Rocky Five because it was more. I don't want to say it, it, all the Rockies are emotional, man. You you can't help but to really get involved into the story a lot, you know. And I feel like with this one, yeah, I agree with a lot of people saying about Rocky Four, but still, I, I love Rocky. I still love Rocky Four even to this day. I still love that movie. Movie, but with Rocky Five, you got more meat on the bones. You know what I mean? You see how Rocky is dealing with the fact that he lost all his money and how he's dealing with the relationship with his son, how they're tight in the, in the beginning of uh, in the beginning of the movie. And then as we get toward the middle of the movie, they kind of break apart. They break apart because Rocky is putting so much time and attention into Tommy Gunn, which is leaving his son kind of defend for himself. You know what I mean? And then as he's spending for himself, you know, Rocky is dealing with the fact that, you know, back in the neighborhood, you know, this is not really what I want to do. He meets Tommy Gunn, and as he meets Tommy Gunn, it's his way of actually being in being in the ring again. So it it was more it was more to the, it was more to the story. And like I said, I think a lot of people give this movie a hard way to go, which I don't know why. I really don't know why a lot of people don't like this one. And I don't know I I can't put my finger on it because like I said, I love all the Rocky movies. The first one is probably my least favorite, but I love all the Rocky movies, you know what I mean? And just 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 for the story and just the overall humanity of it, you know what I mean? And I feel like, you know, Sylvester Stallone did a great job, you know, being right. Well, it's just his character, you know, it's his character. And I feel like he did a great job conveying a lot of the emotion of what Rocky is going through as he's as he's going coming coming through this time in his life. <coughs> And I think it comes across, I think it comes across well on the screen. You know, I love Sylvester Stallone performances. And since I'm going into the acting, I might as well just go in and go right on into it. Um, I love Sylvester Stallone's performance as Rocky as he's coming along and he's getting older. And he's seeing the changes and all the things that's coming in front of his face. You know what I mean? So I enjoy Sylvester Stallone's performance. Uh, Talia Shire, who plays Adrian, and you see her... You see her blossom as she goes along too, but I feel like now Adrian is at a point where she's she's Rocky's rock. You know, she's his foundation. She's his she's his reason for doing a lot of the things that he does. You know, and you can see a lot of the interaction between um, you can see a lot of interaction between Rocky and, and and Adrian, and just the little subtle nuances that 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 Talia that that Talia Shire does and Sylvester Stallone. It's little small nuances that they do that makes you be like, wow, you know, they really are in each other's corner. You know what I mean? Just, you know, when the doctor tells him he can't box anymore, he 
he pulls Adrian in and he, he whispers something to her. You don't know what he's talking to her about, but you know it's it's them two together. And he tells her what he has to tell her and they back away and, and, and she looks at him and he gives her like a little head nod, letting her know like, okay, hey, listen, we need to keep this, on, you know, we need to keep this quiet. And she's speaking for him and she's talking for him. But she's like, you know, we need to keep this quiet. Can this not get out? You know what I mean? And she's always, Adrian has always been that, that that anchor for Rocky when he gets thrown off, she's always been that 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 anchor that pulls him back to reality. You know she's she's been like that in all she's been like that in all the movies. You know what I mean? She was like that in Rocky two, in Rocky two when she was pregnant and she was sick and she tells him to go out there and and fight the fight when he's having trouble with Mickey Don in the third one, and you know she tells him you know pretty much get your shit together. You know we all you know we all afraid. Pretty much she breaks him down in four. She kind of tells him, you know, you can't win. And he's kind of like, eh, I still got to do it anyway. But then she shows up to Russia for the training. And now she's in this movie letting him know, like, hey, listen, you know, you know, you put your heart and soul into Tommy. You're not in the ring. You didn't fight Tommy. You didn't fight with Tommy in the ring. You beat him. You beat him, well, you beat him with heart, not muscle. You know what I mean? And you're losing your family. You're losing your son. Your son is lost. You're losing him. So, you know, she brings him back to the world when he seems to get lost. You know what I mean? And I've always loved that dynamic of their relationship that you know she can she's that she's that anchor for him you know she's that anchor and it's you know it's a testament to any man you know any man that has a a good woman in his corner and he knows that she's she's with him and she's got his best interest at heart man we'll do any we we'll, we as men we'll do anything we'll do anything for our ladies man we'll do anything for our ladies if we know our ladies are in our corner we'll we'll do anything for them you know what i mean and like i said i love the fact that i love the fact of how this was portrayed in all the films, you know how Adrian is such a pivotal, uh, 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 such a pivotal character for, for for Rocky. You know, it's almost like you know, there's no Adrian, there's no there's no Rocky without Adrian. You know, and 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 that's that's been conveyed in all the movies, even from the first moment he met her. You know what I mean? You know, it's been conveyed in all the movies. You know, so I I, I definitely love their chemistry and their relationship. You know, oh, and there's another scene after. Um, after Tommy fights the title fight and he thanks Duke instead of thanking Rocky and you see Rocky is shaking up, you know, and he's, you know, he, he goes to Adrian and she tells him, you know, she like, I told you, you know, you can, you know, you can, you teach him everything you want, but you can't give him your heart. You know what I mean? And just the, just the interaction, man. And I think it's the, it's the interaction, you know, and I think, you know, these, these two have been doing this so long together that they just know each other's chemistry, you know what I mean? And it comes across on the screen and it's great chemistry that comes across on the screen. Uh, Burt Young, who uh, plays Paulie, who's been Paulie from since since the first film. I like Paulie because Paulie has his Paulie has his way. Paulie has he he has the kind of, he's the type of character where you hate him for what a lot of the shit that he does, but you love him because he's a genuine person. You know what I mean? You hate you you don't like Paulie because he can be. The most pessimistic person in the world, but you love him because he's honest. You know what I mean? And, and his honest, his honesty makes makes the character. You know, you 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 can't help, you can't help but to enjoy that about the character. You know what I mean? You know, it's certain line, you know, certain lines that he says throughout the whole entire series, and he still doesn't lose none of it. You know what I mean? When he <laughs> when 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 Robert has to go sleep with him, when 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 Rocky takes in um he takes in Tommy Gunn, and he goes. He, he and and and, Sylvester, and Rocky tells uh, Robert, "Hey, look, you know you can sleep with your uncle Paulie." And Paulie tells him, "He's like, hey, kid, your plumbing don't leak, does it? You know, it's little small things like that. You know, when when uh, when Tommy Gunn comes to the bar uh, close to the end of the movie, and he's talking all of this shit about Rocky, saying, you know, I'm in your shadow, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I just want to be out your shadow. You never gave me a title shot, title shot." And Paulie just comes out and he said, "Yo, you know, Tommy, you you know, you're a real piece of work. You know, you know, you 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 take Rocky and you use you take him for granted, and you know, you a bum." And he pretty much talks shit about him, and then Tommy knocks him in the mouth, and then after he knocks him in the mouth, and Rocky comes over to him, he's like, "You know, you should have left him on the street where you found him." You know, so I, I, you know, you love you love Paulie for you love Paulie for who he is. You know, like I said, he can be one of them characters that can get on your nerve, but he he's also that character. That you love, you know what I mean, and I and, and I don't know if I'm the only one that feels like this, but you know, testament to Burt Young and his acting, you know he he brought a 
he brought the humanity to Paulie, and I and I, and I love that he did that with 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 uh with Paulie. Um, Tommy Morrison, who uh, plays Tommy Gunn, he was an actual real life boxer who died of AIDS. In I think I want to say he died of AIDS in like the mid nineties, I believe. You know, I think he did a good job for it to be his first film. You know what I mean? You know, you can kind of tell he's a little green on the screen, but um, I think for what it what it, what it was needed for, you know, he put it off pretty well. You know what I mean? I, I, I liked his performance, you know, of him being um, this young, hungry, up-and-coming fighter who wants to show his skills and wants to show what he has to offer to Rocky, and then he ends up switching, you know, toward the end of the movie. He ends up switching, and he wants that, that fame, and all that, that fame and that, and that glitz and that glam gets to his brain. You know what I mean? So I think, I feel like Tommy Morrison did a good job at it, you know, and Tommy Morrison was a pretty good boxer, you know, back when he was when he was boxing. He got knocked the fuck out by I can't I can't think of the boxer's name, but whoo, that KO was terrible. That KO that he took was and I don't think he really recovered from that KO in his actual professional life, but in the fights that he did have, he was he was he was a contender. He was he was a good contender, he was a good boxer. Uh Richard Gant, who plays Duke, I can't remember I don't think he I don't think they gave him a first name. They did give him a first name, but they really referred to him as Duke. He brings a, a, a flavor out of this character, you know. And you get that Don King <coughs> vibe for him. But Richard Gant did his Richard Gant did his damn thing, you know. The way he's the way he's talking, the way he's the way he's rhyming his words, the way he's putting things together, the way he's trying to manipulate both sides, and 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 and, and he plays the role well, you know. Richard Gant does his, does his thing. In, in this particular part, and I and I and I love what he did with uh with Duke and you know how he I don't want to say he tried to make him human, but he brought that you know he brought that dirtiness out of him. You know him being that real dirty promoter that doesn't really give a damn about what hap what's happening to the boxes. All he cares about is 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 the money. You know what I mean? He's and he's had he's had a couple of scenes where he was like, damn, this 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 dude is kind of crucial with what. What he got going on, you know, he's he really don't give a damn about what's going on, you know what I mean? So, um, I want to say I think that's all. The, I think that's all about the characters. You had uh, you had Rocky. Oh, and then you have uh, 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 uh Sylvester Stallone, real life son. Sage, say uh, I want to say his name is Sage Sage Stallone, and he plays uh, he plays uh, Robert. He plays his son, and uh, you know, for it, I I think too for that to be his first movie. He does what he needs to do. You know what I mean? You can tell, you know, he's not a professional actor, but he does the job in the way that he needs to uh, do the job. You know what I mean? So, uh, no complaints with with his role as uh, with his role as Robert. Uh, the movie was directed by uh, John G. Alveson, who I think he did Rocky one and two. I believe he did one and two. And you know, it's no different from his directing style. And how he directs, you know. I think a lot of his movies, a lot of John G. Alveson's movies, are, has a lot of humanity. It really tugs at your heart. It tugs at your heartstrings, and I love that. I love that about his directing style. You know, with him doing the Rocky movies, and uh, he did Lean on Me. Uh, he did a couple other movies that was like that too. I can't think of them. Can't think of them off the top of my head. But I know with the Rocky movies and with Lean on Me, he does those kind of real uh, human, emotional type movies. You know what I mean? To where you know, you look at them and you feel for the characters, and 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 you get into them. You know, you get in, you get into um, you get into the story. Uh, you get into the story with uh, his directing. Bill Bill Conti does the move, does the uh, the score for uh, for this movie, and it doesn't disappoint, especially in those emotional scenes, like the scene where Rocky is reminiscing about Mickey. You know, and and and, and with the dialogue and, and and the flashback and with the music that's playing. And, he has a lot of that going on in this film, you know. When he's talking to Robert, when he finally uh, gets back, when he finally kind of grips him and gets and gets, you know, when Rocky finally gets his, his hands back on him again, and not gets his hands on him in a bad way, but when he finally reconnects back with his son, you know, he has he has that music going, and when he's talking to him in the beginning after the after the fight with Drago, you know, Bill Conti brings that emotional factor out of his scores, and he doesn't disappoint. He doesn't disappoint with this movie, you know. So, uh, on a scale, on a, on a, on a scale, I give Rocky Four 
Oh man, what do I give Rocky for? Cause I said this is also, this is one of my favorite Rocky movies, so can I come back? Yeah, I can come back and watch this movie a lot because I watched it a lot when I was younger. So I'm gonna give Rocky four four thumbs up. I'm gonna give Rocky four four thumbs up for nostalgic feel. I gave it four thumbs up for story. I gave it four thumbs up for um for score. And I give it four thumbs up for acting. You know, minus Tom, minus Tommy Gun, minus Tommy Morrison's. Uh, acting and say and Sage Stallone, Sage Stallone's acting, I still give the the the, the acting you know top notch and top quality you know because they made it believable it, it it made for a believable movie and it made for a believable story so I enjoyed it I enjoyed it I, I enjoyed it a lot the only gripe I have with this movie is the the continuity of the time because like I said in 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 and, I, and it's basically got to do with the son's age because at the end of Rocky IV, Robert had to be about maybe seven to eight years old at the end of that film. Now, we start Rocky V at the end of Rocky IV. And when Rocky comes back, <laughs> you know, Robert is a full-fledged teenager. Robert has to be about at least 12, 13 years old in this movie. Now, I don't know if... And, I, you know, you, you you try to give it the benefit of the doubt. I said, okay, well, maybe he been in Russia for a couple of years. Or maybe in Rocky IV, he was supposed to be a little bit older. But they couldn't find a kid to play his age. It, 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 didn't, it didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? But it's kind of like, it's one of them things where it's like, okay, it's a Rocky movie. It's... We can forgive that part. We all know that he, he went through some wild ass age transformation from one movie to the next. But you know, you 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 can you disregard it. You skip it. You disregard it, and you go on. You go on with the story. You know what I mean? Because like I said, it's like everything happens back to back. You know, and then you know my brain and, and you know my writer's brain. I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt and saying, okay, well maybe in the events of the move of the of the movie, maybe a whole lot of time went past. You know. He spent a little bit more time in Russia, but he ain't spent years in Russia. You know what I mean? So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, gotta, you gotta kind of go along with the suspension of disbelief. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. So like I said, man, I'm giving this movie four thumbs up, and uh, that's my review on Rocky Five, right? So like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we did Rocky 4, we did Rocky 5, so now I'm going to go to Rocky 2, because that was the next movie, next Rocky movie that I really related to more, and that's really the next Rocky movie that I really have memories, have memories with. So like I said, a lot of my, seeing Rocky has been way out of order since I first seen it, but that's going to be the next one that we're going to, uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Rocky 2 next. So, as I said, stay tuned, stay tuned for the next reviews. I'm Mr. Mar Sharp. This is Short Man Filmworks, and these are the Everyday Man's Film Reviews. I will see y'all on the next one, and y'all take care.